We are streaming, so um, welcome everybody here today. Um, look, firstly, just want to, there's no, um, no apologies that I'm aware of. I think everyone's here. Looks like everyone's here, uh, which is good. And um, also uh, just want to go to the confirmation of minutes if someone's happy to to move those. Councillor Tozer, seconded Councillor Patterson. Um, we'll take the vote on that. All those in favour? That is carried. Um, hey, look, I just want to just do things a little bit out of order. Um, item 7.2, um, actually want to move that the report, be, the report be deferred to a future Economy, Tourism and Events Committee meeting. Um, and that's seconded by Councillor MacDonald, so just a procedural motion there. So, um, uh, Councillor Gates. Are we able to know in open session why? Because I had a concern with that item, uh, and if it's being deferred, I would like my concern to be considered uh, by the officers while that's occurring, unless you can tell me why um, it's being deferred. I think we can, yeah. Um, Sitting. So, yeah, so, oh. yeah, stay sitting. Oh, sorry, I'm not cheering. <laughs> I'm quite happy for you to stay sitting. <laughs> uh, sorry, Bob. It's through fine. you, Mr Chair, Councillor Gates. So the two parties that were in the report haven't been able to reach an agreement. So that's why it's been deferred. We are still working with the company on potential alternative sites. Um, so potentially in the future it will come back, but it also may not come back. Okay, well, my point was um, that I didn't believe we should actually enter into agreement on a predetermined partnership where it wasn't open to other um, submissions from local companies to be party to that agreement. So if that can be considered as um, part of the reassessment, I'd be really grateful. Okay. All right. No, no other questions there. No, that's all good. That's good. Okay. So, um, all right. We'll uh, take the vote on that that the matter be deferred for a future uh, meeting, uh, if indeed that happens. So, take the vote. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you. Um, okay. Conflicts of interest, uh, I believe we actually have one now, which we've just become aware of. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes. So I, um, I am a personal friend of Mr Eckersley, who is a director of the board of the Gold Coast Academy of Sport. Um, And based on that, I think it would be simplest and most appropriate if I just leave the room during that vote. So, um, okay. So, you, well, yeah, if Councillor Patterson feels, yeah, yeah. And with advice the, the from the city solicitor, that, yeah. that makes sense. So. Okay. All right. So, um, given that that is the... Um, no, it's not. It's the second item, so that's all right. Okay, we'll deal with um, six point one. So we'll come back to to that. So um, when we when we come to that, uh, we've already got that. I'm voluntarily deciding to. Okay, fine. All right. So we we'll move to item six point one, um, which is proposed a proposed divisional allocation budget amendments. And there's been another amendment to the amendment. Um, so I will let. Councillor Taylor, just explain that one. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I just need to um, transfer some money from, as per, I think I sent it to the Minute Secretary, uh, for some movies under the stars in Division 10. Uh, just transfer some money from uh, Project 32605 um, to Project 33107, my understanding is. All right, so we're just going to add that to the uh, to the printed recommendation. So it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward there. So um, oh, maybe not straightforward, Councillor Gates. 
Oh, you said moved. Okay, right. And, uh, and <laughs> well, sorry, what was that? <laughs> no, it's okay. It was actually moved Councillor Taylor, so second to Councillor Gates. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll take the vote on that. Um, all those in favour, that is carried. And, um, oh, William? Yep. I think you're probably, um, yeah, you, you haven't contributed for a while, Daph, so thank you. <laughs> okay. Councillor Patterson uh, is just. Oh, it's 20 now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's got two phones, sir. She's been doing it all day. <laughs> Darryl, okay. Uh, um, just please note that uh, Councillor Patterson has uh, has left the chamber. So, um, for item six point two, there's um, a declaration of uh, uh, an interest, uh, and so Councillor Patterson has decided to leave the room. Um, Nikki. Uh, yeah, are you going to come out and, um, yeah, because I think there might be, yeah, I just got the feeling, so yeah, thanks Nikki, we'll just let Nikki get to, uh, <laughs> really, no, I thought, I just had a feeling there would be questions, so, uh, are you sitting comfortably, Nikki? You are? Okay, I'm not then sure, I will. Counselor. Sounds I will like I might need to then let, in. The question, <laughs> <laughs> let the questions begin. Councillor Tozer. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so, I, mean, I, um, I read the report and st still kind of st struggled to understand how this entity operates differently from the individual sporting peak bodies. I don't know if that was intended. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I just I'm trying to work out has there been a, a frank and fearless discussion with the board and or the CEO or the people involved to articulate that? Um, through the chair, um, that's really the point is that we're grappling with, and certainly the feedback from council officers was that uh, in the past. Um, the Academy of Sport hasn't really been able to really clearly articulate exactly what its role is as compared to the sport development pathways that our grassroots sport group, sporting groups have in the city. So the intention of this report and coming off the back of the fact that there was additional funding provided in the community grants budget as part of Council's um, budget deliberations this year, um, that um, in acknowledging that there was this funding request was being anticipated to come through the program. Um, the general idea was that if we can use this period in the next 12 to 18 months to work with the, the Academy of Sport in terms of some clear deliverables, then we might really be able to land on um, some of the issues we've grappled with in the past around what they're delivering for council and why, and also really starting to clarify and crystallise their role as opposed to, say, QAS's role in the lead-up to the Olympics. So, so as I, I was kind of reading it, I, I'm familiar with the Queensland Academy of Sport, and then obviously this is a Gold Coast Academy of Sport. Where does Sports Gold Coast fit in? Uh, through the chair. What is, what is Sports Gold Coast role compared to the Academy of Sport and the Gold Coast Academy of Sport? That's a totally different type of setup. My understanding is um, the sport, Sports Gold Coast doesn't... I could be wrong, but I don't think they're running elite programs as such. They're just trying to um, bring... They're not running individual, they're not running programs for indivi individual sports that I'm aware of. It's really just a matter of um, bringing peak bodies, you know, together and, and bringing peak bodies to the, the city as such. Um, I don't know, Nick, Nikki might be able to explain that a bit better. Uh, through the chair. So um, Sports Gold Coast, they deliver the Gold Coast Sports Awards and they also work in almost an, a, a, um, 
a investment attraction capacity as opposed to um, Gold Coast Academy of Sport, which delivers or aims to deliver sport development programs for coaches and athletes. And really, it's a pathways program. So, so similar to the Academy of Sport, the Queensland Academy of Sport, it's a pathways and a sport development program as, a, as opposed to an attraction program to really encourage and develop and attract sport to the Gold Coast. But um, Steve Joyce is actually in the gallery. Which, yeah, uh, Councillor, which explained, so it, be, which explained to... it better than I did, Nikki. Thank you. So sort of saying it's really about bringing those sports to the city as such rather than um, putting programs together for individual sports. But you certainly explained it better than I did. Um. And Steve will probably now put us both to shame and explain it even <laughs> better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think um, you probably explained it pretty well all over. Um, Sports Gold Coast are an entity that um, put business in touch with sporting um, organisations, so and they more looked at the grassroots side of sporting was where they first started. They're, they're now we're looking um, from a Olympic point of view and, and that whole context where they fit into the context of sport across the Gold Coast, um, and that'll be that'll come out of our sport strategy and the the sport plan as we go forward. Whereas uh, the Gold Coast Academy of Sport is exactly as Nikki explained that. Yeah. On page 27, it talks about the objectives of um, the Gold Coast Academy of Sport. And, you, you know, when I, when I read the report, it seems like the Gold Coast Academy of Sport are almost... There's, like, some competitive tension between the Queensland Academy of Sport and the Gold Coast Academy of Sport. Would that be a fair characterisation? <clears throat> um, based on my engagement... Sorry, um, through the chair. Based on my engagement, my understanding is really the Queensland Academy of Sport is the peak sporting body when it comes to elite athlete development. Yes. The Gold Coast Academy of Sport is a subset under that. So the athletes that do not essentially garner a place in the um, Queensland Academy of Sport may... Um, opt to try and pursue a pathway or have funding support provided through the programs delivered by Gold Coast Academy of Sport. Um, that coupled with targeted sport development programs or it was explained to me that it's sometimes similar to like a football academy so where uh, participants will actually pay to undertake a program themselves and that then provides uh, the Gold Coast Academy of Sport with an additional revenue source to be able to deliver and develop athletes in the city. Okay. And my last question is on page 34 and 35, it talks about all the proposed programs for 2021 that the Gold Coast Academy of Sport have been undertaking. Have we had any contact with the peak bodies for each of these sports to discuss, I suppose, the performance of the Gold Coast Academy of Sport in advancing the interests of their, their, their player development? Or, or, or is it player development the right word? Competitive development? Through you, Ms Chair. From a, a city point of view, we haven't actually um, been to those entities and asked them about the, the Academy of Sport, per se. Um, so we do liaise with those organisations on a regular basis, but we haven't really done a critique on whether the Academy of Sport has fulfilled what they've said they're going to fulfil in that, that area. And I think part of the process is that um, sport at the moment is fairly muddled in a, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of player... A lot of players in the, you know, in the mix at the moment and part of the process going forward is to develop that strategy and that plan to, to put people in more alignment of where we see those organisations fulfilling those needs going forward and I think that's a really important part of what we need to do going forward um, because you have organisations like Sport Gold Coast and Academy of Sport, uh, the Gold Coast Academy of Sport, Queensland Academy of Sport and, you know, potentially the, the Australian Institute of Sport who all fit into the mix somewhere, plus counsel ourselves in what we do. And I think it's important for us then to be able to define who does what and where we all sit, and that to be clear to everyone as we move forward. That's my questions for now. I'm not sure I'm any clearer. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chairman. I've had a bit of involvement with um, this body over the years, mainly through being Deputy Mayor and uh, stepping in for the Mayor on a number of occasions. And 
and being familiar with a number of the schools that they've worked directly with in harnessing and encouraging um, our younger athletes who don't quite make the grade to be within the Queensland Academy. Um, I just think uh, this is not a large amount of money and um, I, I'm really supportive of uh, this path to encourage them to, to work even harder and to provide a, a stronger pathway, if you like, that is clearly understood by everyone. But I know that uh, in making presentations, we've had some, some real champions surface from that have been identified as part of the um, Gold Coast Academy of Sport program. So in particular, we had, a, the, I think, the Australian champion um, at Upper Coomera State College, and I know that that school participated. And they've, they've engaged with a number of the schools, and I think that um, through that process, they are able to identify talent and to nurture it, and they've got some amazing people involved if... if you look at it, um, and especially with Glynis at, at the helm, um, and she has really reinvigorated the whole uh, entity since she's been on board. So I'm 100% supportive of our providing this, this funding. Um, thank you to the officers for keeping a close eye on it and trying to get a more defined program, if you like. And I think if we, uh, if we support this funding... Uh, this time round in the way that's been suggested, um, we'll see some benefits, especially with the Olympics breathing down our neck. So we'd want to do everything that we can to encourage young sports people in our city. Happy to move it, Chairman. Yeah, and happy to second it. And, and as you say, I mean, some, some fine people... Uh, uh, behind it, and uh, Mickey Vivas, obviously, as well, former uh, state minister for sport, and obviously um, an Australian representative himself in uh, uh, with rugby. So, um, yeah, some good people there behind it, and um, I think it's a good way forward too. I, d I just had one question, and I think I must be missing something here, but um, in the recommendation, it talks about. Um, an 18-month funding agreement, yet it says term one is from November 21 to 31 December 22. 14 months. It was 14 months. Ah, oh, okay, right. So I just thought I'd check. But, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So we just need to, to, to amend that in, in number one, yet the council enter into a 14-month funding agreement. Yeah. I thought I'd missed, yeah, because I looked back and it ran out in June. So, yeah, OK. No, <laughs> OK, so uh, moved Councillor Gates, uh, seconded by myself. Um, I think you've spoken to it, haven't you? Well, I have. I think they might be a little disappointed with what's on the table this time because yeah. it's, um, it's not um, to the extent previously, but... We are looking um, for commercial assistance wherever possible these days and um, I think uh, we've arrived at a, a good position and with the support of Council um, continuing, um, they can look for other funding opportunities as well. OK. Um, anyone else wish to speak? Nope. OK, Councillor Gates, I think you just opened and closed debate. Yes, OK, well, we'll take the vote. All those in favour? That, uh, anyone against? Oh, oh sorry, no, <laughs> OK, carried, all right. Thank you all. We should invite uh, Councillor Patterson back. Oh, thanks, Gwen. Thanks, uh, back into the room. Okay, so welcome back, Councillor Patterson. Um, um, Councillors, the, the next 
item uh, is is 7.1. Uh, we do need to move into closed session uh, for this one uh, for the simple reason that is there on the screen, which um, it actually affects the local government's budget and also negotiations relating to a commercial matter involving the local government for which a public discussion would be likely to prejudice the interests of the local government. So if we can have a mover into um, close, well I'm happy to move us into close. Councillor Taylor uh, seconded. Um, take the vote, all those in favour. Uh, so we're now in.
open session and the streaming is on. So uh, welcome back everybody and um, say everybody or one of you or how many of you are out there watching this. But uh, we had to go into closed session for a couple of reasons, um, which as I say affected the um, local government budget and, uh, uh, and also private enterprise. So um, confidentiality reasons. So we have two items now which um, the first one is on the screen it's actually been moved councillor tozer second to councillor young councillor tozer would you like to speak to this uh, in obviously in quite a limited fashion given that uh, you can't divulge too much information secret councillor <laughs> secret no, no look we have a very um generous incentive program for businesses to locate their um operations here and in this case um it's exciting to see uh, potentially a headquarters for an unnamed business in a target sector for us, um, you know, consider relocation through this grants program. So hopefully it will result in a great outcome for our city. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. So, uh, councillors, uh, are we ready to take the vote on this? No one's got any questions or comments? No, we'll put the votes. Uh, all those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Um, and item 7.3, which uh, is on the screen here um, in relation to uh, destination Gold Coast uh, from a, a previous, um, previous report which came to council, which um, is now moved by myself, seconded Councillor Gates, uh, that the report be deemed non-confidential, uh, except for those parts deemed by the Chief Executive Officer. Uh, and number two, the Council authorises the Chief Executive Officer to delegate to write to the Chief Executive Officer of Destination Gold Coast, confirming that the previously requested amendment to Clause 12C3 of Destination Gold Coast Constitution is not required. It was just basically a superfluous clause. So. Uh, moved by myself, as I say, second to Councillor Gates. Are we ready to take the vote? I'm getting some nods. Okay, all those in favour? That is carried. Um, I don't have any general business items that have been put forward. Nothing that anyone has. Note in which case I declare the meeting closed at 13.55. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance including Councillor William Owen-Jones, who uh, isn't even a member of the committee, but is here anyway.